Geometric series in general is a summation, so a series, of some constant a, just a multiplicative constant, but then there is some ratio r to the power of n minus 1. So, for example, if we express out the first few terms of this, the first one is plugging in n equal to 1, so r to the 0 is 1, so just a. And then when you plug in n equal to 2, you get r to the power of 1, so a r, and so on. And so far we've seen examples where r was one half or r was one third, but we can do this generally for arbitrary r. Now, does this converge? Does this diverge? Does it depend on the parameters? Well, consider this. I want to investigate the partial sum. So let me do this. I'll write down s sub n, the partial sum, and the nth partial sum is the sum of a plus a r all the way up to a r to the n minus 1. Now I'm going to perform a little algebraic trick here. Let me take this Sn and let me multiply r to it. As in, let me consider r times Sn. So a turns into a times r, a r turns into a times r squared, all the way along the final one is a r to the n. Now, I've got this Sn, and I've got r times it, and let me take the difference. Let me look at what the partial sum minus r times the partial sum is going to be. Indeed, this is plugging in for the Sn, that's going to move down, and then I take the Rsn and I subtract that off. Now, there is an enormous amount of cancellation. For example, you see how that there is a plus Ar and a minus Ar? Well, then those two terms are just going to cancel. There's a plus Ar squared, a minus Ar squared, those terms are going to cancel. Somewhere in the dot 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 there'd be a positive AR cubed and there's a minus AR cubed so that cancels and finally also in the dot 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 is going to be a subtraction of AR to the n minus 1 that will cancel the AR to the n minus 1. So what do I actually have left over here? The only thing that remains is going to be the A and the AR to the n. So this difference which I will factor out, the SN comes out the front, the partial sum times 1 minus R is just equal to A minus AR to the n. Now, if I focus on a special case, this is the case where r is not equal to 1, then I can divide out by 1 minus r and just get that my partial sum is a minus a to the r divided out by 1 minus r. Of course, if r is equal to 1, I can't do that. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Now, what I'm investigating is does this series converge? I'm asking whether the series converges by definition meant does the limit of the partial sums converge? So I have a formula for the partial sums, and now I want to ask, well, what about the limit as n goes to infinity of this sequence of partial sums? So I want to compute this limit. Well, the only way that n appears here is in this r to the n portion, so we have to investigate that. Now, imagine r is a number bigger than 1, like say 2. In this case, 2 to the power of n, as n gets large, is going to diverge. When, when r is greater than 1 here, the r to the n term is going to blow up. The whole thing will diverge. But if r is less than 1, say a number like 1 half, 1 half to the power of something really big gets really small. So that portion goes away in the limit. So the point is it depends on the value of r. Indeed, our final way of saying it is that the magnitude of r, so taking the absolute value here, is greater than 1, then this is going to diverge. It's not going to settle at a value. But if the magnitude of r is less than 1, then that whole term, the r to the n term, is going to go away, and I'm just left with an a on the top and a 1 minus r on the bottom. And then I guess the final case I need to analyze is what happens if it's r equal to 1, so this is taking the sum of a1 to the power of n. It's taking an infinite sum of a times 1. It's, it's a times 1, which is just a, plus a, plus a, plus a, plus a, plus a. The infinite sum, which just take the constant and add it up, is clearly going to diverge. So, indeed, I can replace this with not just greater than 1, but greater than or equal to 1. That's when it's going to diverge. So, for the geometric series, we know exactly when it converges and exactly when it diverges. And then finally, this is just the limit of the partial sums, but we said that if the limit of the partial sums converges, then so too does the series. That is how we define convergence of a series. So then I can say that the summation of this a r to the power of n minus 1, that that diverges for the absolute value of r bigger or equal to 1 and converges for less than 1. Let's see this for the examples we began with. Uh, for the particular series that's adding one half, a quarter, an eighth, and so on, this is just one half to the power of n. Now, this is 
almost of the format of the geometric series, but notice the indexing here. It's not to the power of n minus 1, it's to the power of n here. So why don't I just pull out a factor of 1 half, I'll put that into the constant, and now it's to the power of n minus 1. So I've sort of aligned my formulas here. My a is 1 half, and now I've got to the power of n minus 1 on my other 1 half. Okay, plug in my formula here. r is less than 1, so it's in the convergence case. 1 half is less than 1. And so I can just plug it into my formula, and indeed it equals 1. So indeed, if I want to go one unit away and I go half the distance, then a quarter, then the eighth and the sixteenth, I add all of those up, I will eventually get, at least in the limit as these things are going to infinity, converging to the value of one, to have gone the entire way across this length. But if it was only one third, it still converges. It still converges because the r is less than one, the one third is less than one, but now when I look at its sum, it adds up to one half. So going one third, one ninth, one, one twenty seventh, and so on, I'll never get 100% of the way there. I'll never get that one unit away, I'll only get half of the unit away. So in this video, we have talked about the geometric series as a special case of the idea of convergence of series. And indeed, geometric series are very nice. They're one of the few series where not only can we tell whether it converges or diverges, but we can say exactly what it converges to.